Dr. Paul, coming to you today with a quick topic of iron deficiency and neurodevelopment. Pediatrics published a study this past year showing that there is developmental problems, cognitive delays in children who are iron deficient. Now that's not new. We've had numerous studies over the past couple decades showing that iron deficiency is a real problem for the development of the brain. I must say that when I've looked at the iron status of children, and I think pediatricians, family practitioners around the country are checking for anemia around nine months, some might do it six months or a year, but typically nine months, I am finding a relatively high percentage, half to two-thirds of the children are relatively low in their iron status, so they're anemic. But when I check children of any age for true iron status, when you look at total iron binding capacity, TIBC, when you look at a ferritin, which reflects their total body stores of iron, I would say 99% of children are very, very low, total body deficient in iron. And if that has effects on your brain development, folks, this is a real issue. I think if you're not eating an iron-rich diet, this would be meat primarily, spinach is fairly good, then you're going to have to supplement with iron. And for the first year or two of life, something like two to three milligrams per kilogram per day would be a good range to shoot for if you want to avoid a progressive iron deficiency. Now you can have iron better absorbed when you take it with vitamin C, so this might be something to consider. But I just wanted you to be aware of this fact. Thank you for watching. I'm Dr. Paul. Does pumping iron help with the iron? That would be my son who likes to pump iron, and I think that has relatively little to do with your total body iron stores. It's more of a nutritional need. But thank you for the question. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome.